Welcome to the pre-worship experience. It's now known as the scene. Good morning. Happy Men's Day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, I am Derek Carr. I am the son of St. Stephen's, and I am here with the OG, triple OG, the one who started the scene with Miss Crystal in mind. You know it, and it's none other than my brother and friend, Tyler Anderson. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how I got the title OG, and I'm the well, youngest Well, triple OG because of the C. We know you're the youngest on her, but, you know, I was talking about your status. I was talking about your character. Right, I, I wasn't talking about you, your actual, your age. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh, I was just so, just it's Men's right Day. Here. We are super excited. I got my brother with me, and our um, the what we're talking about this year, our theme is Iron Sharpens Iron. And that is the only way as a man that you are going to get better because you got to have other men to help sharpen your blade. And when you get dull and the brothers come and say, hey, man, check it. And that's sharpening your blade. So that's what we're talking about today. Iron sharpens iron. Um, so with it being men's day, um, tell me a little bit about that. How you, you know. You know, I love I love every time Men's Day comes around. That's it's really it's so fitting that that's the theme for Men's Day. Iron sharpens iron, because I mean we see what happens on Men's Day. We see the choir, we see the ushers, we see all the men. But what we don't see is what happens in rehearsals with the men's choir. What we don't see is the mighty men choir who yeah. come together on a weekly basis for rehearsal. It's the fellowship. It's that men holding men accountable and, and having a safe space to worship together, to cry together. That's what I really love about men's day. It's something that I was always able to experience and I was grateful to experience it from a young age. Absolutely. So, I remember when you started. Yeah. But look, before we get into all that, we got a lady with us and we got a lady other than the beautiful Kelly B. Bop from Kelly's corner. She's here to talk to us about something very important that we all need to listen to. So Kelly, we're going to start with you. What's well, up? I am so honored to be sitting here on Men's Day. I am a lady. I am <laughs> Kelly B. Bob. We made an exception. <laughs> um, don't forget, I'm your sister. I'm your cousin. I'm your sore and your friend. And you know, when I'm up here, it's got to do, it has to do with voting or somebody done called in, right? So it's about election time. It's about that time. And we want to make sure everybody has their voter registration information up to date. If you've missed an election, if your family members have missed an election, please check to make sure that you're still on the voting rolls. We have a secretary of state that has purged hundreds of thousands of people from the roll because we're not showing up to the polls. We have no record of these people even being alive or around or living in Kentucky. So they've purged them from the, ro the rolls. It is very important that we come out, that we show up to this particular election because it determines the leaders of our state. It determines the leaders of Kentucky. Governor's race, I don't have to tell you that we could make history in a way Absolutely. that we don't want to make history for our governor's race. So let's make sure that our voter registration information is up to date. We know who we're voting for and we know why. And the deadline to register to vote is October the 10th. October the 10th. My sore roars, the devastating dolls, divas, and deers of Delta, <laughs> Come on Sigma now. Theta Sorority <laughs> Incorporated. Now. We are here in the lobby, in the foyer. We're walking around. We're helping you register. We're helping you check those voter registrations. If you are an ex-offender, which means you did something that you should not have done, but you are redeemed, you had a Class D felony, nonviolent felony, our governor in 2019... 2019 created an executive order to allow ex-offenders to vote for nonviolent crimes. Give him a hand. Man. 
give the governor a hand. But if you have served all of your time, you're not on papers, you're not probated, you are eligible. And we can check that for you and we can register you today to vote. So stop by, talk to us, come holler at us, and we will be able to help you get that information out. We do have some local races. These are more important than next year. They touch us more in Kentucky than our presidential race. Now, we don't want just anybody in the White House, but we want to make sure that we come out and we do what's best for our state and the community of color that we have in Kentucky. I'm here also representing Black Voters Matter, and Black Voters Matter is pretty much a campaign that is given and given the information for our black communities to go and vote because we're not at the polls. We don't show up the way that we should. And that is how we determine our destiny in our community. We're casting our vote for the people in our community to do what is right for us. All right. Y'all give Kelly a hand. Yes. To give her such an important topic. And that is the only reason why we let her come on uh, <laughs> yeah, thank doing you. Men's so Day. It's important. Because so it's such an important topic. So, Kelly, thank you for all of your hard work and your constant commitment to make sure that everybody votes. Yes. All right. And, and not only vote, but make informed decisions in the polls. So thank you, Kelly, for always keeping us informed. Yes. Now you got to bounce. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, don't stay course. around too it's long. Men Day. <laughs> Beat it. <laughs> <laughs> now look, uh, we're gonna do a quick pew check. Uh, check Tyler, will you do that a, for us? A quick pew check. Let's let's see who we got over on Facebook. Hopefully, if you're on Facebook and you're uh, in Kentucky, hopefully you're on your way to church. Uh, but we want to send a good morning to uh, Wanda Williams Ferguson. She says, good morning, church family, and happy Men's Day. And um, also, Bonita Thomas has a good morning, church. Good morning to everybody that's watching us. It's good to see you. Absolutely. Well, you know, with our theme being iron sharpens iron, you know, um, it's important that you recognize who your sharpener is. And me being a part of the men's ministry has definitely helped me. And that's who sharpens my iron. It's the guys that's on the committee. You know, we check one another. We make sure that we keep things going. We make sure the women don't hold nothing on us <laughs> from Women's Day. But no, it is serious. It's been a, such a blessing and a pleasure to plan this whole Men's Day, to everything that's going on. We got some wonderful things today. The men's choir is coming up. We got our T-shirts. Uh, we have men in the kitchen after service. Please make sure you participate today. And the way that we can all participate, men and women, is them checkbooks. Amen. $150. Amen. $150 above, above your tight offer. Offerings. You can all participate today. Amen. But I think we can, we can, you know, we can both attest to that question of ironing, sharpening iron with our pastor. Our pastor sows into us every single week. And we talk about St. Stephen as an institution and the leadership that our pastor provides to us. And that's, you know, that's kind of why we do this tithes and offerings, this $150 above, is so that people, so that we can continue to sow into our church. Absolutely. Um, and to the men of our church and everything that we're doing. So for me, one of those people that sharpens my iron is our pastor, but also just my church family. Absolutely. And, and of course, you know, I ain't going to steal your thunder, but yeah. No, go ahead and take it. Pastor, he mm -hmm. sharpens all of us. But what I appreciate about the scene is it's always a platform to really broadcast and show what's going on in our community. And you talking about two brothers that can sharpen some iron. <laughs> and that's who we're going to be talking to yeah. today. And that's none other than Devon Hope. Yes, sir. Y'all just got to give him some love right there. He has <laughs> blown up. He is refacing West Louisville, Metro United Way. Yep. You know, I've always been a part of Metro United Way, but it didn't even matter Goodwill. until he, the Goodwill, I'm sorry. Goodwill sorry. Industries. It didn't even matter till he became a part of Goodwill. It didn't mm -hmm. matter till he started being a part of it where it really starts to blow up and we're in West Louisville out. So we thank God for Devon Holt. And then the other brother <laughs> that not only will sharpen your arm, but sharpen your physical appearance as well. And that's none other than I thank brother. God for him. <laughs> and that's none other than DeWine Means. Yes. And what I appreciate about both of these brothers, they just good guys. Very good, good guys. guys. It's good Very guys. Good. And anytime you ask them, you know, I've reached out to DeWine before, ask, hey man, what about jump rope, something like that? He just give me the information, roll on, that's <laughs> it. You know, don't ask for anything. So it's just you gotta thank God for just good people. And these two guys are good people. Okay. Yes, they are. Right. 
So we have a video that we're going to show. And then when we come back, we're going to have both of these brothers on the stage to kind of talk through the program they started. Hello, I'm Derek Carr. I am the leader of the volunteer ministry here at St. Stephen's Church. I need your help. The church needs your help. So we are looking now for leaders, our helpers for our SSC security team. So what does that look like? What, what do you even need from us? Oh, so I'm asking for people that may have strong communication skills. I'm asking for people who can make good judgment, not be impulsive. You know, just make sure that you're able to help someone else who may not be able to help themselves. Now, this is all for in light of something uneventful may happen, but we want to be prepared and we want to make sure that we have a safety plan in place. And guess what? If you volunteer for that ministry, you can help us see that through. Now, one thing that would be helpful if you are a former police officer, military, EMS, artwork, any kind of service job, we would love to have you be a part of this ministry. Listen, if this is interesting to you and it's something that you want to do, feel free to reach out to me, Derek Carr, at dcarr at ssclive.org. Look, the church needs you. Thank you. Are back. And just like I said in that video, we need your help for our security team, for all volunteers. Please make sure. And one thing I love about today, we are doing our ministry mixer again. So yeah. go out, scan the QR code, sign up for a ministry today, and be a part of something bigger than you. All right? All right. Derek Carr, you're everywhere. You're in videos <laughs> on the scene. Can we get up for Derek Carr? <laughs> well, come on now. You got to put some respect on my name. Put SOS, some respect. baby. Son of St. Stephen. Yes. I am sold out for, first of all, Christ, and That's I'm right. sold out for my church. That's so right. I'm I love super it. I'm excited. So I love being everywhere, Tyler. I love it. We're, we're glad to have you. <laughs> so we have some handsome gentlemen that have joined us and well put together. Look at this suit my brother got on. Well put together in this tie. Yeah, I'm going to get some stuff before we leave. So we have uh, none other than Dewan Means and of course Devon Hope. So y'all give them a hand, please. And if anybody's been on social media, they've seen that Mr. Holt has had a lot of life changes lately. Oh, it's been good. Uh, <laughs> and so we want to celebrate you and we really want to hear all about it. Tell us about it. Well, uh, on July 29th, uh, with some of my um, friends and family, I um, got to marry the woman of my dreams yeah, in Anguilla. Beautiful. Wow. In Anguilla. Uh, yeah, don't leave that part. Anguilla. <laughs> <laughs> Dewan Means and his, his lovely wife and a number of my other friends and family uh, came and, and, and saw that uh, God blessed me uh, beyond measure when he put Lori into my life. That's a blessing. And uh, we now have a beautiful family. Lori, with her daughter, uh, Alex, and my son, Aaron, uh, have, have started anew together. And it's a beautiful, beautiful experience. And we don't want to forget about your birthday. You celebrated a birthday, <laughs> right? I did. I did. Yes. I just turned 51. So I'm officially wow. 50, wow. Uh, receiving AARP mail now. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's just silver. So. <laughs> now, Angela, get gold. But you get silver. Fine, so. Okay. So we appreciate Thank you so much for coming on, Divine. And then we'll talk a little more about the program, how it happened. But we can't leave my brother my friend, the guru exercise <laughs> yes, scientist yes, that knows what he's doing. And that's none other than my brother, Dewan Means, who just celebrated 11 years with his beautiful wife. Thank you. So, Thank you. Y'all give him a hand. His two beautiful daughters. He's just a man's man. And you just appreciate Dewan. So what's up, man? Talk about 11 years. How's that been? Uh, it's been a blessing. It's Yo. been a blessing. I mean, uh, I pray for everything that I have as far as my relationship with my wife, my family, and uh, it's just been great. You know, I've been able to discover me because I found a woman that helped me discover me. So it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Wow. Let's just make you all <laughs> <laughs> And then, But that's what I was saying. You know, I tease a lot, but when you are around good people, it's so yeah. hard not to be, just feel good when you're just around good people and you both have great energy yeah. and you've done great things. And it's something about seeing your fruit of your labor. Mm. And you see that in the community divine. You see that life changing. You know, this is some of you right here. Yeah. So, yeah, this is, so, yeah, this is some of you this right here. So just to see that in brothers, 
is just sharpening one another. And that's what this show is really about today. Definitely for Men's Day. So um, you all started a mentoring group. And um, talk a little bit about the video you posted with it first. And then let's talk about how you got to, to it and then what it is. I mean, you want to talk about the video? Yeah. Uh, well, just a little backtrack as far as the mentoring group. Uh, God gave me a vision, I think, probably 2018. I've been wanting to do a mentoring group for a long time. And me and Devon, when, I, when we're training, we're always having, like, what I say, barbershop conversations. Mm -hmm. Like, we're just really chopping it up and just being real about what's going on in the community. And uh, Devon, he asked, like, man, well, I know you talked about this mentoring group before. Hey, uh, do you mind if I join with you? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. So I'm just thinking that he's just going to join in and I'm going to keep dragging my feet on the thing. Well, he set a date. He's like, well, we're going to do this next weekend. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. So, so it was awesome that, you know, Devon jumped in because he kind of put a little fire under me to get it started now. Um, but as far as the video, the video, man, it, uh, I don't know if you've seen it. I hope yeah. we can play it. It's um, so to break it down, it was a young man that was trying to break into this guy's house. Mm -hmm. And he can see him on his camera. And the guy was patient. The young man was pulling on the door, pulling on the door. And then I guess the young man kind of gave up. And as he was walking out, the older gentleman opened the door with a shotgun on him, ready. I mean, he already had to pull it on him. And he gave the young man time to even grab his gun. Mm -hmm. So now they're faced out face to face with a decision to make. Now the older gentleman took his time and he talked the young man through and he said, hey, you ain't got to do this. I've been on that side before. This is not what you want to do. Right. And he took total control of the situation. He could have shot him and everything would have been right in his eyes and in the law, maybe. Right. Right. He had to jump on him. His young man's trying to break in his house. But instead, he took control of the situation, talked the young man down and said, hey, let's come inside. Let's talk. What are you going through? He said, you want to make some money? I can teach you how to make some money. The young man said, nah, man, my brother. He said, you want to talk about your brother? Let's go in the house. I won't call the police or nothing, man. Come on. Come on in. So that video was so powerful because he's seen a young man going through something. He said, man, I've been on that side before. I've been on that side of the gun. So he wanted to talk to him. And then what me and Devon, what me and Devon talked about is that some of these young men, they just want to talk. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right? We don't know what they're going through, but they're so used to society, um, social media, the world, trying to tell them what they should be, and they can't be the individuals that they want to be. And so the whole process is called alternate route. And the reason it's called alternate route, because I've been through some things to where I've been able to take another route because someone told me yeah. about another lane to go, right? And so that's all we want to do. We're going to talk to these young men and say, hey, there's another route that you need to take because the road you're on is, is going to lead to destruction, right? Because right? the Bible says, Matthew 7, 13 to 14, the wide gate is easy. Yeah. Right. And if we know the easy, easy is that you don't get nothing. Easy. That's it. Nothing but the narrow is hard and only a few choose it. Right. So that's just what we do. I mean, yeah. discipline is hard. You know, to eat right, that's hard. Right. Yeah. To get up and go to work, get there on time, it's hard. It's hard. Right. To skip class, that's easy. To be a follower, that's easy. So what we want to teach people, you know, let's take the narrow gate because that's the word it says. And it's another way. I All appreciate right. that. Yeah, Thank you is. so much. Um, one of the, yeah, one of the things that I was really excited when I saw this on social media, I was really excited about your two minds merging. Anytime you see me lose a few pounds, it's because of this guy. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's one of the things that Dewan always tells us in training is this is not, you know, this is not something that I want you to just come in and do. I want this to be a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. And that's truly what he means. So when I saw you and Devon really start this, I was like, God, that's perfect. Like, <laughs> it just makes so much sense. But Devon, um, you've been a community advocate um, for a while now, and you've seen young people who veer down um, the wrong path. Talk about the power of the mentorship program. Well, you know, I, I've come to my a personal conclusion uh, watching like everyone else has watched uh, our young people descend into life of despair yeah. where they operate with a sense of hopelessness. And it's scary. Um, we've got young people who don't care if they live or if you live. And the reality is something has to change uh, other than the conversations we have. Because I guarantee you we've all watched the news and complained about what we saw. It's become really clear to me that we had to do something more than just 
complain. We had to be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word, action. And I've, I've personally come to the conclusion that there at this point where we are in 2023 in America, not just Louisville, Kentucky, but in America, there's no government program. There's no check that corporate America can write. And quite frankly, there's no single church that can turn around what we're experiencing. At this point, the way that we change the trajectory of our young people is for every person to get off their couch and connect with another young That's person. It, yeah. That's like, it. connect with them. Because guess what? They're not showing up in church. They're not going to school. They're not at the Boys and Girls Club like they used to be. They are disconnected from institutions that used to teach them morals and values. Yeah. And it's important that we reach out put our hands on them, and give them direction. So Dwan Means and I started with just a plan to be just that, iron sharpening iron, Proverbs 27 and That's 17. It. That's it. And we've got life lessons. We've got access to people and organizations that we plan to bring to bear for these young men who join us for a few hours every other Saturday. And uh, we started last week. And one of the best things that Juan and I could have ever heard as we were trying to figure out how we structure this program because we wanted the, the young men to be a part of it. We want, didn't want to force it on them. We wanted them to be a part of how we structured this. And we asked them, how frequently should we meet? Once a month? And they all said, oh, no, 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 no. We need to meet a lot more frequently. Wow. They want it. They want it. And so because they want it, we want to give them that because there's a, a, a desire for them to be fed by somebody who wants to see them do well. Yeah. And, and that is so powerful because one thing that we don't say, yeah, please give them a hand, is especially as black men, is enough of us to reach out to help each other. Yeah. We don't see enough of us. So, look, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm not going to act like we do. But I do want to ask the question to both of you all before we wrap up and give our last announcement. You all have been so instrumental in the community. You have done so much for so many other people. What has been or who has been maybe one of your big influences? Oh, that's easy for me, the man who stands in this pool. All right. <laughs> same, same here. Yeah, same right. right. Yeah. Dr. Cosby, y'all give him a hand. Cosby. Yes, Dr. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, real quick, information on, so is it closed group? Is, do you already have who you're going to have, or can other people join? How can they become a part? So, right now, we are, um, we've got room for, for, for more. Okay. We just started our first one. We opened the doors of the church, essentially. Right, come on now. shall ever come. <laughs> and we had 14 young men who joined us. Absolutely. Um, hey, Amen. That, that's been yeah. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And, and we've got several others who will, will show up to be with us this coming Saturday at 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. at Dewan Means Gym by uh, Any Means Fitness. Come on. All right. <laughs> got to use that facility, man. Got to use that facility. All yeah. right. Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I would encourage those of you who have young men ages 13 to yeah. about 18 or 19, we've got a range where we feel like we can be effective. Younger than that is probably a little too young for us. Um, older, we can probably stretch that, but it might be a different environment where those older uh, young men uh, find uh, we, we, bec we find ourselves effective with them in different environments. But 13 to about 18, 19 years old, uh, we encourage you to find Dewan Means and I on social media. We are easy to find. Um, our names on the screen, easy to find. Uh, shoot us a message if you have someone that you feel like could benefit from this. Uh, it wasn't just single moms dropping off their boys and girls. It was dads also who Absolutely. felt like they wanted to supplement what was happening at home uh, by having Dewan and I participate in uh, the parenting that they're doing at home. Man, we appreciate you both so much. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Y'all give them another hand. Thank you all for coming. And we want you to come back to the scene later on so y'all can give us an update of what's going on with the group, okay? Absolutely. All right. Thank you for having us. No worries. No worry. You chill out with us okay. for a minute. We're going to give us. announcements <laughs> real quick, and then we're going to go. Men's choir's coming in. We're going to do this thing, y'all. So if you're on your way to church, be careful. And look, pass the link. Share it with somebody else, okay? So men in the kitchen today, after service, we're going old school like we used to. Men in Reverend the kitchen. Reverend Jerome Brown kicked <laughs> off men in the kitchen. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Remember that? And there's so many that 
gone on that yeah. touch men in the kitchen, Jerry Haskins, yeah. you know, um, you know, Reverend Jamar Brown, just so many people. So it's so much tradition behind what we're doing. Uh, Brother Ursuline Weathers and everyone that has passed on. So men in the kitchen today, please make sure you go check it out. Tickets are fifteen dollars. We have a table outside. We also have tickets for our Jazz and More, which is going to be October the 8th. Uh, so we told you men's season, so we expand past men's day. So we still going. All right. Uh, then we have the Ministry Mixer, like I told you about. It's out in the concourse. You want to go scan the QR code and just scan that, check it out. Join a ministry. Do something bigger than you, okay? SSC is hosting. If you have lungs, you can get lung cancer. Next Saturday, September 30th, 1130 a.m. to 2 p.m. here at the worship, in the worship center is it's a free and open to the public. There is a there is going to be a special tribute to G. Leron Rainey. Um, so you can you definitely want to be a part of this. It's going to be amazing. Please make sure you come and check it out September 30th. Thank you so much for joining us today. And remember that iron really does sharpen iron. Thank you, fellas. Please get ready for worship. Here we go. Greetings, St. Stephen Church. My name is Lanisha Porter, and I serve as the Director of Ministries. I'm here to tell you about our Ministry Mixer. What is the Ministry Mixer? The Ministry Mixer is simply a way for you to get involved in a ministry or small group here at St. Stephen across campuses. It's as simple as finding the QR code that is located around the church on a placard, scanning it, inputting your information, and then signing up for whatever small group or ministry interests you. Someone will then follow up with ways to get more directly involved. Please be sure to check it out. If you really want to get connected to a great church ministry, you need to be on the lookout to see what this ministry mixer has to offer. We are super excited for you to get involved and to find your place of belonging inside of St. Stephen Church. Please be sure to scan to serve. Hello, my name is Steve Shaw. And I'm over the parking ministry. We need volunteers. Hey, how's my baby? Boy, she's... Hey, there we go. Look at that. Hey, cutie pie. Come on through. Watch that first step. You know if you miss it, the rest of them don't count. Come on through. I got you. You're in good hands with all state. I got you. We need you to come out and help get our church members across the street safely without any hurt, harm, or danger. Along with volunteers, I am also a greeter. We need volunteers for greeters as well. Hey, lady. You doing all right? Good. Welcome to the Stevens. We'll open the door for you, give you a big smile and a handshake. This is what they call customer service with a smile. Hey, we know that's right. Glad to have you again today. I also sometimes help out with the ushers. We'll open the door, find your seat in the church. Probably your favorite seat as well. Along with that, I'm also going to be over our Sunday school. I'm with Fresh Anointing Sunday School class. We have plenty of Sunday School classes that you can be a part of. Please, we need volunteer teachers for that as well. I'm also the co-chair with Missions and Outreach. We just had a great food drive where we're giving the canned goods that we collected from the church members to di three different outreaches. We're looking forward for volunteers for that as well. Now, anyone that wants to volunteer, you can reach us at ssclive.org you can call the church. You can even see me when I'm helping you across the street, open the door for you, whatever it takes. So we look forward to hearing from you as soon as today.
2023 where we are grateful to be in the house of the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together for the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. Has the Lord been good to anybody out there? If he's been good to you, anybody come to bless him? Anybody come to praise him this morning? I will bless your name. You're my healer. Jesus, you're my way. 
I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We have any happy people in here today? How about Men's Day 2023? I will, I shall, I must praise the Lord. Good morning, church. My name is Scott Love. I'm here to read our scripture for us. We're coming from Proverbs 27. First one says, don't brag about tomorrow since you don't know what the day will bring. Let someone else praise you, not your own mouth, a stranger, not your own lips. Anger is cruel. Wrath is like a flood, but jealousy is even more dangerous. An open rebuke is better than hidden love. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Amen. The reading of our Lord. Will you join with me with closed eyes, bow down heads, and let's bless our Lord today through prayer. Father God, the men and church come before you this morning, lifting up your holy name. Lord, we acknowledge that you are sovereign, acknowledging that you are merciful, acknowledging, Lord, that you are loving. Master, we come before you this morning with a prayer on our hearts for the men. We acknowledge that we have not always done what you have called us, but Lord, please see our worship. Lord, please see our hearts. Lord, please see our tears. And know we love, love you and want to walk in your will. Right now, men say right now. Right now, Father, I ask that you bless our minds that we think on holy things. Bless our ears, Lord, that we hear from you for your direction and guidance. Bless our hands that we might lift them up in reverence to you and in service to others. Bless our feet, Lord, that we walk in your will and be examples for our sons and daughters. And bless our hearts that we may love our families, our community, and our church. Father God, we seek, uh, Father God, we seek the balm of Gilead to heal our sin sick souls. Lord, that we might be forgiven, that we might be renewed, that we might be empowered, Lord, that we can have your feet and hands, that we may carry the blood stained banner into battle for the hearts and minds of the lost among us. Finally, Father, we offer our thanks for all that you have done, acknowledging that we are not worthy. And we as the men of St. Stephen pledge that we will frog all day and every day. That is, we will fully rely on God. Please hear our precious, please hear our prayer, our precious Father. We offer it up now in the name that has no equal in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And all hearts said, Amen. Yeah. You know what? We got, I know that's what I get because I was about to be funny. I'm still doing it. You know, we, you know, every year, you know, Tanya Triplett would always say, ah, Miss Colette did it again. You know, so I got tired of that. <laughs> Fellas. All right. Because, you know, now I'm just playing. <laughs> but look, we want to do an original song. Can we do originals? Listen, everybody always talks about what happened when Moses got to the Red Sea. They went through the Red Sea. But what happened after? After the deliverance. What happened after the deliverance was what? Praise. Tap your neighbor and say, I came to praise him. I came to give him a hallelujah. I came to give him a thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's have some fun. Come on. But you did Oh, no longer a slave No bondage, no chains It was you Ooh, I just want to give you All the glory and praise It's you I want to say Take time to say Thank you, Lord We just want to tell the Lord Thank you, Lord, for bringing me out uh, I was going 
never make it through this but God Hey, didn't see a way out of the storm and the rain but you did Stephen and happy men's day my name is Rashawn story and I have been given the great privilege of doing the welcome this morning so if we have any first-time visitors worshiping with us online would you please leave a comment or an emoji that way we can recognize you and welcome to st. Stephen Church and if we have any first-time visitors here in the sanctuary would you please stand 
Amen. On the behalf of our pastor, Reverend Kevin Wayne Cosby, we welcome you to St. Stephen Church. You could have chose to be anywhere else today, but we are so glad that you came to be here with us. And we hope that you enjoy today's service, and we want you to come back again. The ushers will also be handing you a visitor's card. If you could, please fill out that visitor's card and put it in the offering receptacles as you come around for offering, or you can hand it back to one of the ushers. This morning at the church, we will also be having something called a ministry mixer out in the concourse. So if there's any ministry that you have always wanted to be a part of, now is your time to come sign up. And I can speak on behalf of all of the mass choir members. If you can sing or you like to sing, we want you to join the choir. So come out on Thursday nights at 6.30 p.m. That's Thursday nights at 6.30 p.m. for the mass choir. Now, we have a new ministry here at St. Stephen that I'm really excited to announce because I have been appointed one of the leaders of, along with Tanisha Marshall and Kelly Cunningham, and this is going to be called the JCPS Support Group. So all of my fellow JCPS employees, we want you to sign up. Even if you're retired, come sign up. We're going to have a good time. We're going to get to know one another. We're going to have outings. And we're just going to have a good time because I know sometimes working with people's kids, you'll end up at Our Lady of Peace. <laughs> so this is the time to come relieve some stress and have a good time with um, your church members and fellow coworkers. So I hope that you all come out and join that ministry. Now we have a tradition here at St. Stephen where you look at your neighbor on the left and on the right of you and you tell them, God loves you, and so do I. And we're going to take our Sunday selfie. And let's pass the love. Y'all get up. Everybody get up and hug somebody. My name is Derek Carr, and I stand before you this morning, and this is... William Portson. And I was blessed uh, to give leadership to the Men's Day uh, this year, uh, but nobody is anything without a team. So Man. I want to thank God for the team, uh, the committee that worked with us, these brothers. We had a good time. I wrote them out. 
You know, we laughed at each other. We picked fun at each other, but we had a great time. So everybody on the men's ministry, can you stand up, wave your hand? If you was a part of them, some of them are out at the table, some over in the gym and men in the kitchen. Please give these guys a hand. They did a great job. We worked together. We was in the last quarter getting these shirts together, but we made it happen. God is good, and he saw us through. But one thing I appreciate about our church and, of course, about our pastor is there's nothing wrong with saying thank you. All right? It don't cost no money to say thank you, to say thank you to people when they do a great job. Um, So this first person that I wanted to um, just thank God for, and my assistant right here is going to help me, This is an award to a young man of the year. I know it might seem not seem like a lot, but it's just something to be able to see a brother and a young brother doing the work of the Lord, always doing something. You know, we asked this brother to help us out. He helped us. He didn't give us no flack, no problem. He's always smiling. He's always working. He has a good attitude and he loves the Lord. And that's none other. Our man of the year, 2023, Brother Jesse Saunders. That was a surprise. <laughs> um, thank everybody. Thank the Lord. Um, I did not expect this whatsoever. Um, I just want to say thank the church, thank the deacon board, Miss Kern, um, Deacon Love. I don't know where he went to, just right there. Um, I was not expecting this, y'all. Thank y'all so much. Um, let's just keep moving forward, and God bless everybody. Thank y'all. Man, man. Look, I saw Jesse this morning. I said, uh-oh, you got a suit on, bro. <laughs> he didn't even know it. <laughs> God bless you. All right. If I could have a drum roll, please. This is for our St. Stephen's 2023 Man of the Year. Now, when I say this name, it's going to make sense to you. And that's what means that this brother has done work tirelessly, is always willing to help, and he got about 35 jobs in the church. St. Stephen's 2023 Man of the Year, none other than Steve Show. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I, I want to accept this award on behalf of St. Stephen's Church family. I, I had no idea, but I'm always appreciative. And see how good God is? If you just do his will, the rest will just fall into place. Now, I want y'all to know that I'm still accepting volunteers. There you go. Parking there you go, ministry. Steve. Uh, I, I did get a gentleman that his wife said he's going to help you in the parking ministry. We do have greeters, ushers. I do it all, be little and small, 8 and 80. But uh, we also need help. Just sign up for something. You know, God done blessed us too much. I threw out 10 boxes of shoes the other day. I mean, just the boxes, not the shoes. Uh, They didn't have no shoes in them no more. And when I was a little kid, I had a hole in my shoe I had to go to school in. I told my kids that story. They said, Daddy, you're lying. I said, I'm telling the truth. In the snow, I walked from 26th Street to John F. Kennedy on the railroad tracks. Y'all, some of y'all, they took the railroad tracks up. Let me be quick. But I'm thankful for this, and I do appreciate and love my pastor. I love y'all too, can't you tell? Amen. And now it's giving time. It's giving time in the Lord's house, giving time in your house as well. You know, the the, the men's day theme is iron sharpens iron. 
right? Iron sharpens iron. Let me ask you, why do you want sharp iron? Well, well, hey, if, if, you, if you're a lumberjack, you want to have a sharp axe in your hand. If you're a chef, you want a sharp knife in your hand. If you're a tailor, you want sharp scissors. Why is that? that that's because the instrument, the tool, needs to be sharpened to its use. Right? And it all depends on whose hand you're going to be in if you need to be sharpened. Amen? And we're all instruments in the hand of God. God puts his hand on us to accomplish things in the church and to accomplish things in the world, to accomplish things for our good and to accomplish things for God's glory. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise as we've come into his house this day. We've come together joyfully. We've come together in celebration because it is giving time. We want to give, first of all, we want to give ourselves to the Lord. Lord, I'm available to you. Sharpen me. Make me ready for that which you have for me because I know it's going to be good. I know you wouldn't lead me into something that is not good. And wherever I am, I want to be in your hand and I want to be ready in your hand. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise as we stand. All through the worship center, we're preparing for our offering this day. We're going to stand together and pray together, and then we're going to give together to the glory of God. You know what? M many of us have already given electronically. You may have already given online or uh, given through cash app or text to give. God bless you. We appreciate that. Maybe you've put your check in the mail. The U.S. Postal Service is going to deliver it. Since we're all here together in the Lord's house, since you're watching online, we have the opportunity to give to the glory of God by walking around with our offerings. So let's bow for this word of prayer together. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for making us instruments in your hands. We, we understand and appreciate your sharpening process, and we thank you, Lord, for those who are here at St. Stephen Church that sharpen us week in and week out. We bring you, Lord, this special Men's Day offering of $150 above and beyond the tithe. We bring that to mark this occasion in our hearts and in our minds and in the life of the church. Receive now these gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's say together, amen. 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 We're now in the capable hands of our usher ministry. God bless you. Come on, St. Stephen, put your hands together. If you wait upon the Lord, I know Jesus, you work it out. If you wait upon the Lord, I know Jesus. All you have to do is put your doors up. If you wait, wait upon the Lord, I know He will. Hey, if you wait upon the Lord, I know He will. Yes, He will. If you wait upon the Lord, He will. Sometimes uh, make it low. Come on, you ain't have to be just like Job. Uh, you got to always uh, wait on God. Uh, hell, I'm trying to tell you, did you, did Yo! 
the trials and tribulation uh, keep the way down you gotta hold on and keep your faith uh, you always remember uh, you gotta trust in God this room that really knows that there's a God in heaven 
I mean, you really know there's a God in heaven and you put your trust in him. Amen. Amen. And he will do what? He'll work it out. Why are you trying to figure it out? The Lord is in the process of what? Working it out. My God. Amen. First of all, brothers. These brothers have been singing. My God. Now, we got a great attendance here. But let me tell you something. What you don't realize is that two weeks ago, we started 8 o'clock service. And 8 o'clock service is starting to look like 10 o'clock service. Is that all right? And that hasn't... Uh, you, that does not include those who are still online. What I'm trying to say to you is our church, by the grace of God and your support, is healthy. And that's important because our institutions, if our community is going to be healthy, our our institutions must be healthy. For example, the family. The family has to be healthy. Our churches have to be healthy. The our businesses in our community have to be healthy so that we can turn dollars over in our community. Our schools have to be healthy. If you want to know the health of the community, put the thermometer in the mouth of our institutions. Say to our institutions, like, family, open your mouth. Church, open your mouth. Let me put the thermometer in your mouth. And if the church has a cold, the community's messed up. If the family's sick, everything's messed up. And guess who is the spinoff institution for the other institutions in our community? The church. It's the church. So there's hope as long as we continue to have a strong church. And it takes great women to have a great church. Where would we be without the women in the church? Let me tell you where we'd be. Can I tell you where we where can I tell you where we would be without the women in the church? Let me tell you where we would be. Broke. But where would we be without the men in the church? Because sometimes what these young fellas and young ladies are looking for, they're looking for um, healthy, aspirational male models. Not just a model. Maybe I should say real models, not role models, who are aspirational. Someone you can look at and say, you know what, I want to be like Buster Soares, who is our preacher today. Amen. Amen. The Reverend Dr. Buster Soares, who uh, served for many years as the pastor, now pastor emeritus of Lincoln Gardens, First Baptist Church Lincoln Gardens in New Jersey, wears multiple hats, pastor, scholar, teacher, former secretary of state of the state of New Jersey, secretary of state, and also the inspiration behind a movement that has swept our country called D-Free, D-Free, debt-free. And he has a whole program that churches have embraced that is helping our people get out of debt. Now, I don't subscribe to Reverend Ike. Some of y'all too young to know who Reverend Mike is. But Reverend Mike did say one thing. He said that uh, it's not the love of money 
but it's the lack of money that's the root of all evil. And uh, there's nothing wrong with money. God gives to you, so God might give through you. And Dr. Sores has put together a program um, that, in fact, he came to our church a year or so ago, prior to COVID, and he presented. And, it, and if you've got some money challenges, then you might want to uh, revisit um, what he taught here at St. Stephen Baptist Church. Um, have you heard of Karen Hunter? Karen Hunter, nationally syndicated talk show host. She, she, whenever she has wants someone to give a biblical worldview on anything, she has Dr. Soros come because he's 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 bold. He's he's not beholden to anyone. He's not beholden to Democrats. He's not beholden to Republicans. He's beholden to God. And he tells the truth. And he's a phenomenal preacher and a friend. I've known him for 30 years. We were in seminary together uh, working our doctorate of ministry back in the 90s. And I've always admired him. And I'm just honored and thankful that he consented to come to be with us. And once you hear his message, you will be glad that I invited him. Every Sunday on our way to church, Barnetta turns him on. I mean, I just look at her and I say, <laughs> she turns on Buster Soares to supplement what her husband might be. <laughs> but we're thankful. Don't you laugh, Jason. <laughs> so we're just honored to have him, brothers and sisters. These men are doing a great job, aren't they? Amen. Amen. So immediately following the selection, won't you receive my brother, my friend, the, 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 our pastor for today, the Reverend Dr. DeForest Buster Soares, Jr. Amen. is not given to the swift nor to the strong oh, but to the one that endures I'm not 
not seen Neither have ears
church say amen. amen you join me in thanking God for these brothers who are leading us in worship Marvelous. We give honor to God and thank God for this privilege we call life I thank God for waking me up this morning grandma taught me to say he didn't have to do it but he did to pastor Cosby my dear friend First Lady Cosby, I am honored to be back in St. Stephen's. This is certainly one of America's great churches, and you have one of America's great pastors. Let's thank God for our pastor and First Lady. I did serve First Baptist in New Jersey for 30 years, 8 months, and 16 hours, <laughs> and uh, had a marvelous time during my tenure and now I'm on a broader mission after serving as pastor and I'm trying to help our people become financially free and uh, your pastor has been one of my chief encouragers and your first lady right by his side good to see Ruby and Vernon Jacobs they were with me well they came to Jersey from here and then they came back here and went somewhere else but they were good members of First Baptist. So thank you. Good to see you, Ruby and Bernie. <clears throat> I, I've been trying to uh, preserve enough to make it through four services. <laughs> uh, we used to have three services at First Baptist, but I retired from that before I retired from the church. But... Um, when my staff saw the schedule, they said, did you know you were doing this? And I just never answered, you know, I just, <laughs> only Kevin Cosby can preach me four times in two states on one day. <laughs> <laughs> only Kevin Cosby. John chapter two, the gospel according to John chapter two, let us stand for the reading and hearing of God's word. I'll be using the, New Revised Standard Translation. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it when the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first. And 
and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. <laughs> but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Amen. Like this uh, text to help us with this thought today, what to do when the wine runs out. What to do when the wine runs out. I have, I have been inspired and instructed by considering the context of Jesus and his disciples. It's no secret that God has all power and that Jesus performed what we call miracles. They weren't miracles for Jesus. They were just ministry. But I've learned in my Christian journey that sometimes we become so focused on the power of God as demonstrated by Jesus that we sometimes fail to become participants in our own blessings. And I say that because when I study Jesus and I consider, as I mentioned, the context of Jesus' miracles, what has really been instructive for me has been to watch the human interaction that occurs almost consistently when Jesus does something profound. I wrote an entire book about a man that Jesus encountered who had been born blind in John chapter nine. And I wrote that book because I needed the blind man to teach me how to position myself as he did to receive the deliverance that I need, needed when I had cancer. because I originally went to that chapter to meditate and focus on Jesus' power. But the Holy Ghost had me focus on the blind man. Consider this, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, it says that Jesus called Lazarus and said, come forth, and Lazarus came forth. And after Lazarus came out of the grave. Jesus instructed those who were there to take his grave clothes off. And what disturbed me for years was trying to understand how did Lazarus get out of the tomb after Jesus raised him from the dead with his grave clothes on. But that's a different sermon. <laughs> the point that I'm trying to make is that it can really be profound if after considering the magnificent, marvelous, miraculous power of God demonstrated through Jesus, we would consider the human interaction because what we can't do is what Jesus did. But what we can do is what the humans did. So we know that Jesus turned water into wine. You don't even have to be a Christian to know that story. And the context here as the plot goes into this wedding amplifies what happens in Jewish heritage. A wedding then was a week-long affair. And now it says by the middle of the week, the wine had run out. Suffice it to say that we could preach this sermon and have folks shouting about the power that Jesus has to turn our water into wine. If water is the ordinary and Wine is the extraordinary. We say in church, Jesus can turn your ordinary into extraordinary. <laughs> See, that's how, that's how preaching goes. If ordinary is bland 
and extraordinary is spicy. Jesus says, I can turn your bland into spicy. If water is broke and wine is prosperous, Jesus can turn your brokenness into prosperity. We could preach a whole revival on the implications of Jesus turning water into wine. In fact, some people are described as having believed in Jesus because once they saw that kind of power, they said, that's somebody I want to hang out with. <laughs> when I was in college way back in the old days, we had a brother that owned a car. He was the only guy on campus who owned a car, and we would take up an offering every Friday and give it to him so he could go down to town and buy our communion, you know. And, and, uh, we, we called his car the wine wagon. <laughs> now, had there been somebody who could turn water into wine on campus, we'd have given him our rooms. We'd have paid his tuition. <laughs> But in this text, it says that during this week-long celebration, when people have come from near and far, and a part of the activity to celebrate the wedding was to serve the guests some wine. About the third day, the wine ran out. And what's so inspiring today, particularly on Men's Day, is to consider how, how we got from the wine running out to people believing that Jesus could turn the water into wine. I say that because when I think about my own family, when I think about my own relationships, when I think about my own personality, if I'm at a party that's supposed to last seven days and the core staple at the party is wine, and by the third day, the wine runs out, I'm likely to leave early. <laughs> I mean, the wine is all a part of the festivities. The consumption of wine is embedded in the profundity of the moment. In other words, no wine, no party. But we can stand here today and testify about the Jesus that we know can turn our ordinary and to extraordinary because despite my personality and my proclivities, somebody, when the wine ran out, decided they're going to hang around anyhow. That may not seem that profound to you, but my brothers and my sisters, we have a tendency in life when things go south or when things get sour or when the joy is no longer present or when the feeling is no longer warm or, or when the sugar is no longer sweet or when the praise is no longer high or when the friendships are no more referring, we, we have a tendency to not want to stick around. It's almost as if we keep one bag packed just in case the next argument is the last argument. It's almost as if we have membership someplace else waiting for us as soon as somebody looks at us cross-eyed at the church we're in. We're quick to leave when the wine runs out. We're quick to give up on relationships when, when we no longer hear music in our ears while no music is playing. We're, we're quick to give up when, when who used to be slim and fine is now a little more plump and aged. We're quick to give up when he doesn't have the kind of cash that he used to have. When the wine runs out, we're quick to leave the party. But the reason we can testify, the reason there are witnesses to what Jesus did was because somebody, for whatever reason, decided the wine may have run out, but I'm still here and I'm not leaving here. I came for the wedding and the wedding is more important than the wine and I'm staying around here anyhow. That's what we need in the church. We need some anyhow saints. That's what we need in the choir. We need some anyhow singers. That's what we need in the parking lot. We need some anyhow servers. We need some folk that are willing to hang in there even when the wine runs out. Yeah. 
I stopped doing weddings some years ago because they just got on my nerves. I got tired of watching folk make all these plans, spend all this money, invite all these people, get say yes to the dress, knowing that they're not going to stick it out when the wine runs out. I just, I just, Kevin, I just stopped doing them because they weren't going to stay married anyhow. Plus, they're going to spend thousands of dollars on the wedding and give me a chocolate chip cookies for doing it. I stopped doing weddings. And then if you notice, if you notice, they don't even say the vows, you know, uh, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, till death was part. They now write their own vows. I saw you the first time and my skin began to crawl and I just loved your teeth and your hair. Yeah, whatever happened to till death do us part? I'll tell you what happened. We decided that when the wine runs out, we're out of here. So we know that Jesus can, can turn water into wine because when the wine ran out, somebody stuck around. And then I was so inspired by Steve. Steve came up and said, sign up for something. <laughs> you know, I, I, I love that. And it's almost a shame you got to give somebody special recognition for doing what everybody's supposed to do anyhow. You know why you can give a man of the year award to somebody that does all that work? Because most folk don't work. Most church members are spectators. But can I tell you what happened that day at that wedding? Mama said, do what he tells you to do. And there were big pots, 20 and 30 gallon pots used for ritual cleansing by the priest in religious activity. And he said, take those pots and fill them with water. And the reason we now know that Jesus can turn water into wine was because somebody was willing to do the work. Lord, Ruby, Ruby will tell you, Vernon will tell you, First Baptist, there's some folk that wouldn't get the water pots filled unless the pastor asked him to do it. But you know, there's some things you'll do if the pastor asks you, but if, if Sister So-and-so asks you, you're like, I got to hear it from the pastor. And what's interesting about the church is that we want church to be good. We want good music. We want soft pews. We want coordinated parking. We want air conditioning in the heat and, and, and warmth in the wintertime. You know, we, 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 we want church to be good. We, we want organized religion. We don't want disorganized religion. We want to start on time and end on time. But we want somebody else to do it. Somebody had to take those pots. Do you know what a 20 to 30 gallon pot weighs with water in it? No, you don't because you've never done it. <laughs> you can't even imagine. But somebody not only hung around, but someone was willing to do the work. And in this age of social media, we've been deluded into thinking that a hashtag is a substitute for sacrificial work. But 
the wine ran out, these people were around to do the work that Jesus needed done. And then Jesus, when the water pots came back, he said, take, take this sample to the steward. What, what's interesting is that when you look at, the, when you look at Jesus from 2,000 years hence, you know the end of the story. But when you place yourself right into the text and see what's happening and hear what's happening, it does not always make sense. What in the world does a water pot have to do with a party that ran out of wine? And who in his or her logical mind would conclude that whatever is in that water pot solves the problem of running out of wine? See, you see it now because you know the end of the story. But in between Jesus' instructions and our testimony comes faith. The kind of faith that the Clark sisters used to talk about. I'm looking for a miracle. I'm expecting the impossible. I can see the invisible. I can feel the intangible. Something's got to hold you in there. And they took it to the steward, and the steward did the significant act that started a whole movement around Jesus. <laughs> he tasted the water and realized it was wine. What, one of the reasons we, we have in our new churches, more people and less power. One of the reasons that we have bigger numbers and less influence, one, one, one of the reasons we, we have this duplicity on the one hand, we've got more trained clergy, we've got religious schools, we've got Christian media, but we also have more wretchedness and ratchetness in the culture. I mean, listen, we've got, we've got entertainers that thank Jesus for everything. They wear crosses around their necks when probably that's the most clothing they have on is the cross around their neck. We got women who call themselves names that we've tried for years to get men not to use to call women. The vulgarity and the violence that has saturated our culture, our country, and our community is rampant. Why? Because we've got a form of godliness without the power of God. And the only way that's possible is when you can wear the symbols of faith, but you've never tasted the wine. More than wearing a cross, it's more than quoting the scripture, it's more than having a post on Instagram talking about, I'm a child of God. Because if we call on the name of God and say we celebrate Jesus, but have no fruit from our lives that reflect the kingdom of God, we, are, we have a form of godliness but we are denying the power of God. That's why David said, taste and see. Taste, taste and see that the Lord is good. Had no one tasted that wine, there'd be no testimony. Had no one tasted that wine, no one would know Jesus has power. Had no one tasted, somebody had to taste the wine and my brothers and my sisters, I'm begging you, don't just come to church, don't just sing in the choir, don't just pray your time. 
taste and see how good God is. Taste and let him give you power. Taste and let him give you joy. Taste and let him heal your family. Taste and let him heal you from your sins. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and your testimony that the water has turned into wine will bring somebody else to the kingdom and they too will taste as long as you know what to do when the wine runs out. Let the church say amen. What a word. Let's stand all over this room. What a word. Thank you so much, Dr. Buster Sorez. My God. Maybe someone can bear witness that you have not seen God turn water into wine. But you have seen God turn wine into houses. And tuition. And food. Because there was a time when you had a habit. There was a time that you wasted your money on an addiction. But you got delivered. And the money that you used to spend on wine put food on the table. Helped pay tuition. So he didn't change water into wine, but he did change water into food and water into clothing. And Mary said, whatever he says do, do it. And they didn't really know what he was going to say. He might have told her to go to the liquor store. They didn't know what he was going to say. They might have said, well, go get some Kool-Aid. But if he said get some Kool-Aid, go make Kool-Aid. Or there's a possibility he could have said, I know you're embarrassed and they're going to be talking about you because your wine ran out. But just learn from it and grow from it and I'll give you the grace to deal with the shame and the embarrassment. You never know what the Lord is going to tell you to do in a crisis. But whatever he says do, do it. Just do it. And as the choir once sung earlier, things will work out. They will. How many of you know that things work out? Let me ask another question. I don't know if things work out. How many of you know, based on experience, that things can get better? I don't know why God allows things to happen. I do know this, that you'll never be great unless you go through something. That was a boxer, and uh, he was at Muhammad Ali's training camp, and somebody observed. They said, champ, he... He can box. Oh my God, look how quick he is with his left and his right. And Muhammad Ali said, yeah, he can box. He can use his left, he can right. Use his right real well. But he'll never be champion. And they said, why? Because he can't take a punch. And to be a champion... You got to be able to take a punch and get back up. Whatever he says do, do it. Everybody needs a church home. You can't show me anywhere in the Bible where it says somebody was a Christian and didn't belong to the church. Not only because of what you can give, but because of what 
on what you can get, but what you can give to somebody else and be a blessing. So on this men's day, we invite you to come forward as a new member, as an inaugural member of St. Stephen Baptist Church right now as a new Christian, being baptized, if that's what you first must do, or perhaps you have been baptized and you've drifted away but need to come home. On this day, make your way. God's got something for you to do. Whatever he says do, whatever he says do, whatever he says do, do it and do it right now. Do it urgently. Come on. God bless you. Come. God bless you. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. This is your chance to come down. Come on. We have three to join the church, amen. Heaven is smiling, amen. On behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Kevin W. Cosby, we welcome you, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let us not forget, if you arrived after the tithes and offering, you can still give across all our platforms or outside the door in offertory receptacles. Men, let's not forget that our 150 commitment, amen. Amen. Let's step up to the plate, men. Amen. Amen. Let us not forget that the uh, ministry uh, mall is out there in the concourse. Go out there and visit that ministry mall and sign up for a ministry. Also, uh, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority is out there signing up people who have not registered to vote. So if you have not registered to vote, please go out there and see them in the concourse area. And the men are doing their thing over in the Family Life Center. So you don't have to go home and cook. You can go over in the Family Life Center and get you a dinner for $15. Amen. It is men in the kitchen. So go and be blessed. Amen. Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we come before you, Lord God, just to say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for your word going forth in this place, Lord God. Reminding us, Lord God, when the wine runs out, Lord God, we can still trust you, Lord God. And for that, we just want to say thank you, Lord God. Lord God, help us to go out into this dying world and tell somebody that you are still God and God all by yourself, Lord God. Lord God, we ask as we prepare to leave this place whenever your presence 
Cover us with the blood of Jesus till we return to your house once more. These and all the blessings we ask in Jesus Christ. Let the church say amen, amen. and amen. amen. Men's Day 2023 Man. in the books. We had a great, 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 great service. Yeah. Eight o'clock was amazing. I heard Indiana was great. The bus and store is on its way to uh, Hardin County, so yeah, we cool. know 11, uh, 10 o'clock was crazy, too. So yeah, I'm yeah. Derek Carr. I'm Juan Q. Smiley. And look, we're going to do this post-service wrap-up. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to just wrap it up. We had a great – it started our theme today was Iron Sharpens Iron. And we started it, of course, at 8 o'clock service. But then we yeah. started on the scene, and we kind of talked with uh, Dewan Means and with Devon Hope about a mentoring group that they started with the ages – 13 to 19 and they were just talking about how they're mentoring to young men and how our young men need us yeah, and just yeah. like with our theme being iron sharpens iron us as brothers we should sharpen one another yeah. so that's been our theme all day we hope that you gave your 150 dollars above your tithing offering the men's choir wrapped it up it, you still can you still can we'll still take yeah, it yeah, you know yeah. just like clarna you can do a little, uh, half of it every <laughs> After pay. pay <laughs> right. You can do all that. So we'll still yeah. take it. It has been a great day. Now everybody's going over to Men in the Kitchen. Look, Man. make sure if you are you, anywhere close. Anywhere um, close, get to church. Man. Eight o'clock is crazy. I mean, we are just people are coming. Place. Make sure you come in this place. It won't yeah. be the same until you're here. Now if you're online, right. I hope you're enjoying what you see. I hope you're enjoying the service. And continue to pray for our pastor and for our church that we will grow yeah. and do what it is that want, the Lord wants us to do. Here we are in September, October's next yeah. month. We getting ready for pastor's anniversary. It's, I mean, I'm telling Crazy. you, just stay tuned. But Everything's coming up. Men's month may be over, but we still have one last event, right? And that is nothing else than yeah. jazz yeah. and more. October, October the, 8th the 8th at our Hardin County campus. Yeah. You got to get tickets. Last year, we had such a great time. Great local performers. Just singing and uh, playing instruments. It was so great. And then yours truly was the MC, so we was killing it. So <laughs> <laughs> make sure you check us out. Look, I'm hungry, so I'm going to go over to Men in the Kitchen. Yeah. So I'm Derek Carr. I'm Juan Keep Smiling. And it's the post-service wrap-up. Wrap up.